Since today is the Tuesday before Krampusnacht, you know today's video is going to be all about local goat folklore. I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton, and today we are celebrating the ancient Central European holiday, Krampusnacht, but we're adding an Appalachian flair. Krampusnacht is held every year on December 5th, which is the evening before December 6th, which is the Feast of St. Nicholas, also known as Sinterklaas in the more Germanic countries of the world. The tradition goes, you leave your shoes out the morning of December 6th, and if you were a good boy or girl, Sinterklaas or St. Nicholas will put coins in your shoes. But in Germanic folklore, Krampus, who is the St. Nicholas's shadow, he's also known as the Christmas demon or Christmas devil sometimes. He is a goat figure or a furred figure anyhow. He's usually a ghost, a goat demon. I keep wanting to say ghost. I write too much paranormal fiction, don't I? So he's a goat character who punishes bad children. He either flicks them with switches or um, puts them in his sack and he carries them away. So he'll punish you and he'll leave lumps of coal in your shoe. I did a whole two hour special last year on Krampusnacht. It was my release party for my book, Zinfandel's Grimoire which I have around here somewhere. It's back there. I didn't come prepared today. That wasn't very smart. Anyhow, the book Zinfandel's Grimoire came out November 20th of 2020. I had a big launch party December 5th for Krampusnacht because Krampus is a character in my book and I love my Krampus. He's a totally different Krampus. He's very lovable. He isn't evil. I don't really believe in people being evil. I mean, there's there's evil in the world, but anyhow, I'm going off on another tangent. But this year, I wanted to find some sort of local goat folklore. In a brilliant burst of luck, I found a West Virginia goat who repeatedly escaped the farm where she was living uh, when she was just a kid. Time after time, the, the farmer just got frustrated, so he said, fine, kid, you're on your own. So for 15 years, she survived in the wild on Powell Mountain. Somehow she managed to escape predators, hunters, cars, and yet she would be seen along the roadway in West Virginia, along Highway 19. People would see her and she, honk and wave and she would just do her cute little ear flip thing that that goats do and she really became a local legend and how she survived in the wild for 15 years I have no idea but in March 2019 she suddenly went missing and her remains were never found and the people started noticing that the grass was starting to get taller and uh, no, one, no one had seen her. The interesting thing about this is she lived in Nicholas County, West Virginia. Tell me that's not cool. Nicholas County, West Virginia has a rogue goat. That is so cool, isn't it? The townsfolk never gave her a name. She was just PMG, the Powell Mountain Goat. So I gave her a name. And I'm calling her Pammy G. Get it? Pammy, P-M-G, Pammy G. So that's what I'm calling her. And I'm going to give her a story. And you, my friends, are going to help me write it. Let's take a look. Local photographer Ann M. Johnson has maintained a Facebook page for the Powell Mountain Goat. She wrote an article for the Summersville Visitor's Guide. She writes, even though she is no longer on the mountain, there is a lesson that she left behind for us. She wants us to be sure-footed and climb our hurdles, even when we only want to give up. 
when the elements in our hearts are stormy and uninhabitable, she wants us to create a safe haven for ourselves. Her wish for us is to experience a place like she had, where freedom lies, survival reigns, and love strengthens. I think that is so beautiful. So that's going to be the moral of our story. So we're going to take the moral of our story and we're going to work backwards. So first we need to identify what kind of goat she was. Appalachia does not have any indigenous wild goats. But I think, I did a reverse Google search based on one of the photos off of the Facebook page. And it looks like she is a Sanin goat, a Sanin goat, I don't know how to pronounce that. According to a website called Backyard Goats, Sanin goats are heavy milk production, milk production breed. With that high production comes the need for increased protein. If nourished well, the Sanin goats can live past 15 years. So she, if she was three months old or whatever, when she ran away and she lived on that mountain by herself alone in the wild for 15 or 16 years, that's the average lifespan. So she's doing pretty good. We don't know how she died. Her remains weren't found or if they were found, nobody reported them I, or at least I should say I haven't been able to find anything I I'm guessing that she was never found so that leaves the door wide open for writing a story about her Let, let's write something let's give her a story that's gonna be our Krampusnacht gift to Pammy G we're gonna give her a name and we're gonna give her a story and you are welcome to write one of your own. So we have the moral of the story, which is all about independence and climbing and not being afraid and bucking the system. So we have that as the moral to our story. Um, so we're gonna work backwards from there as far as the story goes. But fiction is always the lie within the truth. So you find First you find the truth, and then you can craft the lie. We're going to assume that she was a Sanin goat, and please correct me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, that the average lifespan is 15 years. That's if she's living in captivity. Uh, we don't really know how long they would last in the wild because they're domestic goats. We also know that they are a Swiss breed. Well, Switzerland has Krampusnacht's character because they are a Central European people. So they do have a Krampusnacht character. So we can pull some inspiration from that. We also know that we're in Appalachia, which has the Pennsylvania Dutch. So we can uh, pull some inspiration from Pennsylvania Dutch folklore. If you are into contemporary folklore, you may have seen on Amazon Prime the show Hellier. So, or Hayer, if you're in Kentucky, it's pronounced Hayer. The show Hellier is about these, um, these little green goblin men in Hellier, Kentucky, which is three miles, three hours, not three miles, three hours south of where I live now. And they also have a connection to the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which is that way. So Hellier's that way and Mothman is that way. So here we are, Pammy G is right at the convergence of Hellier and the Mothman. Well, actually, that's not true. She's closer to Mothman. But anyhow, if you are into Bigfoot, Bigfoot is huge out here. There's, there's a whole Kentucky Bigfoot um, association out here and they're very active. Actually travel to Powell Mountain and just check out what Powell Mountain is actually like. Well guess what? Eddie and I did that last week. I just did a highly scientific Google search on native 
animals of West Virginia. And it turns out that mountain lions have gone extinct in West Virginia, and the uh, as have the gray wolf. So, the only predator that's still around in West Virginia is the black bear. So if there's no black bears on Powell Mountain, she really didn't have any other predators except humans. And how she she knew, okay, so get this, she knew not to go on the road. How come deer don't know that? Deer are constantly crossing that damn highway, always. She knew better. Somebody must have told her, don't go on the gray part. Just stay on the soft surface. Don't go on the hard part. Um, so she must have had a guardian angel looking out for her. So who would that guardian angel be? What if her guardian angel was the original goat who inspired the Krampus story? Maybe the Krampus story just got blown out. Maybe there was some independent goat, headstrong Ibex, over in Bavaria, or Austria, the Austrian Alps, that whole area, part of the world. And you know what they say about strong-headed women, we're all evil, we're evil. So maybe that's where the Krampus story came from. Some strong-headed, independent-minded woman goat, nanny goat, and they turned her into this Krampus demon character. Well, maybe that's not true. Maybe, maybe the ghost of the original Krampus was Pammy G's guardian angel. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments down below. So what, what would you write? What story would you write for Pammy G? Or, and would you call her Pammy G or should we call her something else? But I'm gonna go with Pammy G. So we've got Bigfoot, we've got Hellier, and we've got Krampus. We have so much inspiration to pull from. Plus we have what we know about real life. So lots to work from, and let's see what we can come up with. Um, I'm gonna put together my story, and I would be interested in knowing what your story is. Let me know in the comments down below. Flurries of snow fall softly on Powell Mountain in early December. I should be cold and lonely, hungry and scared, but I'm not. I'm at peace up here. Did you see the nice memorial somebody built for me? That was so sweet. I wonder who did it. The townsfolk still talk about me. Over at the winery, They've bent many an elbow spinning yarns about the old Powell Mountain Goat. I'm downright legend. I was supposed to be a dairy goat living on a farm down below. My breed is renowned for our milk production. Come from Switzerland, we did originally. They got some Christmas goat demon over there, but I tell you what, he ain't no demon. He's my guardian angel. He come pay me a visit every December 5th, and for 16 years, he watched over me and protected me, kept the bears and the hunters away, taught me to keep my hoofs on the cold, soft earth. Anytime I'd wander too close to the hard gray road, he'd zap me in the hindquarter before the car zoomed past. I've always loved this mountain. The folks are mighty kind. They love to take my picture and I love to pose for them. But that's all over now. A few winters ago, I just got too tired to carry on. I told Krampus I'd go with him this time. So now, every year, I come back and check on everyone. I think it's awful sweet what y'all have done for me with the Facebook page and the memorial 
and the nice little write-up in the visitor's guide. I'm mighty humbled. But I do have a message I want y'all to take heart. And this is what I told my friend Anne when she talked to me for the story, for the visitor's guide. Here's what I told her. When the elements in your heart are stormy and uninhabitable, I want you to create a safe haven for yourself. My wish for you is to experience a place like I did, where freedom lies, survival reigns, and love strengthens. Merry Christmas, y'all, and happy Krampusnacht. Okay, so now it's time for my West Virginia grappa brandy and my Kentucky bourbon glass. Prost. Oh my God, this is really good. You know what, I got a funny story to tell you about this. I left this in the car on Saturday. We went there Saturday, I think it was, and I left this in the car and I just now pulled it out. And of course my car was freezing. So this is nice and chilled. Oh my God, so good. If you found this video informative and or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are a critical thinker with a sense of wonder, please subscribe to the Rivervine YouTube channel. I upload videos every Tuesday and you might just find them entertaining and informative. Until next Tuesday, I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton and I will see you next week.